I would like to welcome all of you who hear this uh, and see this video to come visit MBAD ABA African Bead Museum with our feature exhibition, Iron Teaching Rocks How to Rust, which takes up a, uh, a city block in the city of Detroit. And we'd like to thank the city of Detroit and its people for allowing us to uh, build this installation because there was no way we could tell them what we were trying to do. We had to show it and it's here and you should come out, come out and see it and enjoy uh, some of the things that other people have enjoyed. spanning a period of over 500 years. Uh, in 1999, we moved to the present location where we are today, Grand River and West Grand Boulevard. We painted artwork on the building. We painted a mud cloth pattern on the first corner of the building. And since that time, we got a lot of response from that piece of artwork. And we began to put additional art on the building. The building is adorned with beads from out of Africa. The bees deal with traditional customs that African people were engaged in. In fact, the moment a mother became pregnant, she was adorned with bees, and those bees protect her and the child. The moment the child came to the world, bees were placed around the child's waist, and from that point on, every three years throughout a male or female's life, they would adorn, acknowledge, with bees. Those bees communicated Pacific information about Pacific things. Our goal when we came here was to open a bee museum and exhibit some of those artifacts, but there was a cost involved. We were not able to, uh, to open the bee museum, so we decided to put the bees outside 
One day I was out on the field behind me. I picked up a rock and a piece of iron was protruding out of that rock. So I said, oh, iron teaching rocks how to rust. And that began the genesis of this installation that's behind us. There's about 11 components to this installation and it's dealing with the social, political uh, situation that existed between Africans and European for the last 500 years. Uh, the power of iron, uh, you couldn't live without iron. Iron holds the, uh, the cells together in our body. Iron is the most abundant material in this universe, yet uh, our emphasis has been on diamonds, gold, and silver, yet we can't live about this material called iron. Uh, and that was something that, in Africa, the iron was, was very important. It was used as magic. It also had a value because with iron, you have a material that you can clear the land. You can make weapons that are quite powerful. Uh, the blacksmith was the most important person in the community outside the chief. Sometimes the blacksmith uh, power was greater than the chief because the, the importance of iron. And iron is used in this installation. The next material that's used in this installation is mirrors. Uh, when you look in a mirror, you think you're looking at a three-dimensional image. But actuality is, is two-dimensional. Uh, and if you take the mirror further back in time, it really becomes a, a fascinating, fascinating fascination uh, with the people because with mirrors, you can uh, see, look forward and see what's behind you. Uh, you can use mirrors to start fire. You can use mirrors to redirect light into the, the caves and the cavities in the, in the pyramids. So mirrors are very important. Mirrors also uh, have been used as portals to go to other universes. Every culture on this planet has some anecdotal story relating to the use of mirrors. Uh, wood, the importance of wood. I said that iron is important. Wood is more important than iron. Well, how can that be if we can't live without iron? Because the trees set up the ozone that we were able to come out of the water and breathe. So those three materials uh, are the materials that were used, that's, that are used, and will continue to be used in this installation. Uh, wood in the African cycle. The sculpture pieces were made out of wood. Our ancestors were buried in the trees. We saw the trees as standing life. We didn't see the tree as something that was there for the purpose of our use. The trees were very important to us. We didn't destroy the trees. By the way, 80 percent of it has been destroyed. The, the, the planet now has only 20% of its actual uh, wood supply in forms of trees on it today. A total misuse and destruction of uh, a material that is so important to us. Uh, I'm using a lot of symbols. Uh, a circle and a dot, that's in Yama. That means those who came before you. Always remember your ancestors. And a dot is the child. We will always be symbol people. Uh, placed in between the child and the uh, our ancestors. And if that is our psychic and that is our point of reference, then that means we will be respectful of the ancestors, the elders, and the children, which we find ourselves in a system today that we are not. We uh, leave them to the, uh, to the government to take care and provide for them. But that's something that should not be outside of our uh, family. And family becomes the community and the community becomes the government. So there's a connection between the materials that we're using out here in this installation. And there are 11 ex exhibits out here. We have a wall that's 115 feet by 12 feet high. There are 28 scripted African languages on that wall that was written prior to the 1500. That's major, that we'd have uh, that many scripted African languages. But by scripted African languages, you can take those uh, scripts and mash them up to the alphabet and you would read them the same way. But a lot of the African languages did not have grammar, uh, spacing in between the words, similar to the way uh, 
our email on the, on, uh, the internet work. We don't have space in between our names. So that's an overview of what we're doing here at MBAD ABA African Bead Museum. We have the largest selection of African bees, uh, at least in this part of the country. We have been collecting African bees for over 20 years and we are going to have a bee museum where we can exhibit those bees, uh, especially to African children in particular, but to all children in general. Uh, we get people all over here, world. literally from so all So this is reminiscent of Africa before colonization and enslavement. Africa was a destination point that people traveled all over the world to come to, and we are uh, reliving that experience here now. Uh, the city of Detroit uh, has embraced us, uh, we have been recommended on all the uh, places to go and things to do in the city, uh, tourists, uh, places for tourists to go. We have been received uh, and we make no bones about what we're doing here. We're African-centered because we have the right to preserve and record the history of African people. Uh, there's only one museum that, that came before us and that was the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History which was founded in 1965. Uh, prior to that, there was no museum in, uh, in this country other than the disabled in Chicago, preserving and recording the history of, of African people. Uh, and there have been plenty of museums in this country. We have to begin to think in terms of structurally disseminate information about our people and in institutions uh, where uh, the children in the schools will use as resource center, and you do that with museums. So we have uh, a, an accredited museum by the mind of the people, not by uh, European accreditation system, but we have met the approval of the people who come here, see our exhibits, and go back and do their own research. Uh, history, factual information, has never been in the possession of the established organization. People tell their story themselves better than anyone else. And history has never been made up of uh, facts. History has always been uh, told in stories. Uh, America's history, it's full of stories. And I don't have to mention any things about that history. You, you have a right to tell your history however you want to. Uh, the goal of telling your own history is to inspire and motivate your people to do the best that they can. Thank you.